Ladies and gentlemen, enough is enough. I can no longer stand by as the website that I so know and love is being overrun by corporate greed out of the darkness, out of the shadows, not the hero that we want, but the hero we need emerges. And his name is John Cena. All right. So obviously, my name's not John Cena. Uh, my name is just Mitchell. I'm just a average, uh, at best, consumer of YouTube. But there's something that's been going on a while now that I wanted to address. And a lot of that has to stem around demonetization and the reason for that, the adpocalypse, if you will. The adpocalypse, oh no. But it's basically like this big struggle that we are seeing play out on YouTube between creators and YouTube Corporation. I think this has really been thrust into the spotlight uh, recently because of YouTube Rewind in particular. But I'm not here to shit on YouTube. I think not only did plenty of people do that, uh, the video itself kind of shits the bed. The ratio itself explains that. So I'm not gonna do that here, but there was a comment that was, I think the most upvoted or the most liked comment on the video summed it up pretty well. So as an outsider looking in, obviously I don't have any insights into how they run things or anything like that. But what I wanted to do is just give an outsider's perspective as to what YouTube was, what it has come to be or what it seems like it has come to be, and then maybe try to merge the gap and hopefully find a common ground that YouTube can stand on, that the creators can stand on and live happily ever after. So with that, I drew this. All right, sorry about the, uh, the shadow we got here. The lighting's not very good in this room. Currently, we'll get better going forward. Trust me, can't get worse. Am I right? So here, this is a drawing that I put together, kind of an idiot's point of view, an outsider idiot's point of view of the YouTube ecosystem, if you will. And it's made up of four components, right? And those are all in the squares. The creators, the viewers, the advertisers, the YouTube corporation. So creators are kind of what early YouTube was founded on, you know, said broadcast yourself. That was their slogan, if you will. At first, people would put videos on there and they, some would go viral, some wouldn't, but creators found out that you could gain a following doing this. Fred, in the early days, was the, the one that really took off and kind of put YouTube on the map and gained notoriety that way. And the reason that I, I think that it became so popular was that creators, especially when they started out, the interaction with their fans was very intimate. It was a small group with the creator and there's a lot of back and forth. Even creators nowadays with millions and millions of followers will do their best to interact with their fans. Fast forward a few years, now it looks like creators you can almost split into two separate categories and those are the individual creators, the one man crew, two man crew, one person, a few editors, and the corporation. That's essentially the Jimmy Fallon's, whatever late night you want to throw in there, the Ellen's. Just look at the trending tab and it's whatever YouTube's trying to shove down our throats at that point. Whatever UMG artist puts out a new music video that week, that's gonna be on there um, because UMG is a very reputable company and uh, would never misuse YouTube in any way, shape or form to just gain monetization through loopholes in YouTube system. They would never do that. They're a very upright and uh, no, f them, I don't know. But anyways, the creators brought viewers to the website. So there's a lot on the site. So obviously creators putting content on the website brings viewers to the website. You know, casual viewers such as myself up to this point, we are just there to be entertained. Well, with viewers, as it is with any social media, there comes advertisers. They want their ads in front of eyeballs, as many as possible. And obviously YouTube Corporation really likes the advertisers because that's how they make money. But it seems like now the problem is, is that creators, the individual creators, who care about their fans and the fans that care about the individual creators. And don't get me wrong, I love a good carpool karaoke, but 
Seems like he's kind of run that river dry, has he not? Just, nah, I'm just saying, just saying before we know that it's gonna be like genius and he's gonna have the backpack kid in there trying to stay relevant or whatever trend the corporations try to keep up with. Them. Anyway, sorry, sorry, sorry. What creators, the, their biggest problem is that YouTube seems to be only caring about what corporations want and not about individual creators. It seems like every week, at least every month, there's a problem that pops up that gives individual creators a hard time to make a living on the website. Whether it be the absurd copyright problems that they're having right now, or the demonetization that goes on for little to no reason, it seems like. I can't speak from myself, I'm just listening and taking other people's word for it. But at the same time, we see UMG's music videos that have way worse than what most people's content have them rise to the top of the trending page. And you're like, whoa, where's the algorithm's signals for these? So it seems like they're being very hypocritical. And so I think that's where the biggest problem is right now. But what I don't understand, and this is kind of where I'm trying to bring it all back together, I don't understand why YouTube doesn't play to their strengths. Advertisers fucking do, will do anything to get the viewers that are already on YouTube's website. And that's the youngest generation right now that most marketing companies try to market to. Basically under 25. Granted, I know, I think the majority of YouTube users are under 35 for sure, but I would say that most are in the 18 to 25 range. And trust me, companies do anything and everything they can to get that young consumer to see their product. And I get that YouTube can't just say, look, if you want this young consumer, there's a chance that your ad will show up on a slightly edgier content. I get it's not that easy, but I do think that they're gonna have to maybe stand by some creators and say, look, you know, you're, you're pushing back on us, but if you want to truly get the young consumer, you're going to have to deal with this for a little bit somehow. I don't know, I just think that the YouTube corporation can talk to the creators and say, what do you think that your audience would like? Because I guarantee you, the advertisers, board, or marketing high ups that are making these decisions are older white men who have no freaking clue what is trending or what is popular, especially on the internet culture, which is what YouTube is founded on. It's the memes, uh, the jokes, the goofs, all of that stuff. They, they don't know. So just ask for some advice. There's a few brands that do it well. Crocs just took their brand from being a very memeable brand to being somewhat relevant, doing a deal with Post Malone because the younger generation sees him as a trustworthy and a decent person. He's down with the memes, he's down with the internet culture. Youth drives the culture. So they can continue to try to do business like Facebook and Facebook just throws ads up anywhere and everywhere and they can ask probably for more money because the ads are very specific, not just, just because, not because they, they infringe upon your uh, privacy and listen to your conversations. That's, that's not it, that's not it. That's just kind of how I see it right now. I think that YouTube needs to lean in to the good thing that they have going right now and just talk to their creators more and get an understanding of how they, maybe advertisers can reach their, their audience and everyone can live happily ever after. I keep hearing people talk about how YouTube is trying to be the next television and that makes no sense to me because they have an audience who has already abandoned television, not to mention it is a medium that is dying. So again, why don't you lean into where your platform already is versus try to be something that it's not. I get that you want to offer up a competitor to television and try to gain that audience, but for that, you need to educate an older audience that isn't already on your platform. Why alienate what you already have to gain what you don't? All right, so that's it for this video. Appreciate you sticking around if you did. I didn't mean for that to be so ranty and I don't want this to come off like, I think I know YouTube better than the people working at it. It's just I work with brands who don't really understand internet culture, YouTube culture. And so I know that there's a struggle between the brands that advertise on YouTube and YouTube itself and just trying to find a, a common ground in the middle that that's all I really want. I just want more people to continue to come to the website and make good stuff. Uh, just keep YouTube growing. Um, but yeah, this was fun. So I think I'll do it again soon. I enjoyed it. Sorry, I can't draw worth a shit. Like I'm, I'm pretty aware of that and it'll get better. Trust me, it'll get better. Come back next time. 
It might be slightly better. Probably not, but maybe. Like it, subscribe. Everyone says it helps you grow. I, I don't know. Well, let's see, I guess. It's cringy as hearing someone who's literally done one video ask for that, but hey, shoot your shot, man. All right, guys, well, I'll catch you later.